Hello there, I'm here to introduce you to a project called Pig Bang. Pig Bang is a project for anybody who wants to have a go at doing something unusual in the curriculum or with the community groups. It's effectively a vacuum powered bazooka. It's very straightforward. What we do is we give you the information on how to make your own bazooka. This one here, joined to a vacuum cleaner, and then we fire through that various designs of pigs. Now pigs could be a piece of foil, a chocolate wrapped in foil, it could be almost anything you want to design. And that's the great thing about this project, it links into the curriculum in so many different ways. You can do this individually, you can do this as a group project to help build up the SEAL skills of your students, and you can also do this linking directly into the design technology, the science and many other areas of the curriculum. And it works at Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 3 depending on the amount of stuff you want to put into it, the amount of depth you want to go into. It's fairly easy to do as well. Unlike a lot of projects that need quite expensive equipment, this one is well under £10 to create this bazooka, and the items themselves will cost less than 10 pence. And in use, fairly safe to use as well. Obviously we're talking about projectiles that fly through the air, but fairly blunt ones as well. Not, nothing too complicated. So if you're interested in this, please come and have a look at the website. It's Nottingham Learning Gateway, and the project you're looking for is called Pig Bang. And there you'll find free information, you'll find PowerPoint presentations, you'll find worksheets, you'll find videos and photographs, and a manual of how to do this. Thank you very much. We're going to have a look now at the bazooka. As you know, the bazooka is made of plastic pipes, absolutely straightforward plastic pipes. And they're fitted together to create the final shape in which we have a loading tube and the firing tube, and then here where the vacuum cleaner joins. Now this particular bazooka has been fitted with a double-ended part for the vacuum to join, so you could have two vacuum cleaners here. We'd normally only use one though, that's usually enough if you've designed the pig well. The pig fits into the loading tube and is drawn up by the fact the pressure inside the tube is lower. Now it's lower because you've put a vacuum cleaner on it and that's sucking the air out, reducing the overall pressure. So it's actually pushed up the tube by the outside pressure, the normal air pressure around us. Now, if it was only made of foil, it would be so lightweight that when it got to this point, it would be sucked down into the vacuum cleaner. But we've got a marble in the end as well, gives it a bit of weight, and that means it keeps on going, its mass gives it a bit more velocity, keeps on moving and shoots out the end. Now to make it work properly, you need one other thing. You need a piece of paper, because when you attach the vacuum cleaner to this end, Unless you block off this end, the vacuum comes in from both ends and it won't be enough suction. So with this end blocked off with a piece of paper, all the vacuum is sucking up from this end, drawing up the pig, and as it goes out the end, it knocks the paper off and continues on. Very important you get the right size of tube. You may look at this and go, that's really great. What I'd really like to do is build a massive one with really large tubes. But as you expand the size of the tube, you need a much greater amount of vacuum to operate it at the same velocity. So the tubing we're using here, standard 40 millimeter internal diameter plumbing tubing, is ideal. Smaller and it's difficult to make the pigs, larger and you will not have enough vacuum cleaner suck to really make it work effectively. Have fun. I'm going to show you how to make a very simple pig standing for pipeline inspection gauge. A pig has to do three distinct things. First of all, it's got to fit in the pipe. If it doesn't fit in the pipe, it's no good. Secondly, it's got to go through the pipe, because if it gets stuck, that's no good either. And thirdly, it's got to seal as much as possible around the inside of the pipe, so that the air pressure pushing it from outside is used. You've got maximum amount of that power used to drive the pig up the pipe. So here's we're going to make a very simple one. Now this is just foil and a marble, but you can make pigs out of almost anything you want to. And there's lots of information in the free manual on how to do this. And for those who are particularly interested, Ferrero Rocher's chocolates fit perfectly. So we take some foil, tear off about 300 mil, piece like that, and then fold it in half. Smooth it down and then take your marble and starting on the side where the two open pieces are, start rolling it round. Now, 
When you do this with your other hand, or you can use something in there instead, keep this end open and you're aiming to make a roll about the same size as this, the inside of the pipe. Don't roll it around the outside of the pipe, it'll be too big. And we roll this from one end to the other. And you can, if you want to, fold it over as you go along to produce our finished pig. Now, when you get to the other end, you might want to tape this section here where it's loose. That stops it coming undone after a few firings because the forces involved does tend to splay out the foil. I'm going to make sure this end is blunt, very important, don't let the students put a sharp end on it. Give it a twist and then use my thumb to open this up and get it to the shape I want. You may have to tuck in any loose little bits. And that gives us our finished pig. We check it with a pipe, not brilliant, you can see that it's a bit wobbly inside the pipe, so I might want to just adjust it a bit more, oops, until the fit we get is a lot better. It should be good enough fit, if you tilt it slightly it's not going to come through, if you tilt it completely it will fall, and that's what we want. So this pig made a foil and a single marble, and your choice of marble, you can use a larger marble, but bear in mind there's a lot of power there, so if you are going to use large marbles, please take care with the firing, the health and safety. But one marble works quite nicely, and then make sure your foil fits nicely inside your pipe. And that's it. Have fun. I'm going to show you how to put the bazooka together using these compression fittings. Compression fittings are a standard fitting used in plumbing, where you want to join something mechanically nice and strong, but you also want to join it so it's water, or in this case, airtight. Now, I've already got these two tubes joined, I'm going to show you how to join the other pieces on. To start with, we're going to join this main tube onto here. Now, we have, on all compression fittings, some form of cap that screws on, a washer and a rubber sealing washer. You put these on in this order, cap, oops, then the hard washer, and then the sealing washer, like that. Now if you look at the sealing washer, you'll see it's got an angle on one side of it. That angle has to face towards the joint, and inside the joint there's a corresponding shape, known as a sealing area or seat, that that fits into like that. So we put this on the pipe, and then we do the whole thing up. Now take care when you're doing this, you don't get cross threading. That's where you're doing up the plastic, but the cap is not absolutely at right angles. You can tell if it's cross threaded because you'll hear it click a lot when you do it up. So we do that up, make sure it's pushed in, and that gives us quite a strong joint. Now, to attach the vacuum for this particular design, known as a two vacuum design, we're using another of these joints known as a T-joint, because one comes in from here and there's two from either end. I've sealed one end off with a plastic bag, so I can just use one vacuum cleaner, but you could attach two vacuum cleaners instead. And again, I'm using the cap, the hard washer, and then the sealing rubber washer, making sure I have this angle facing towards the joint. Now you'll notice I'm using a very short piece of pipe here in order that I can join it together. You need to use a piece of pipe, but making it short makes it easier when you're actually doing the firing. And then I do it up, making sure it's pushed together, and that's it. And even though it is done up, you'll find you'll still have the flexibility to turn it around to angle where the vacuum goes in. Have fun. I'm going to show you here how you fire the bazooka. You can see I've joined it to this vacuum cleaner. Now this particular vacuum cleaner I've taken all the filters out of. If you do that, watch it doesn't overheat and watch you don't muck up the motor. An old vacuum cleaner or a higher, higher suck vacuum cleaner is better than to try and break the one you've got. We've got it joined here, only the one. We could join two if we wanted to. And to do this we've got the bazooka, the vacuum cleaner, 
the pig that we're going to put through, and the most essential bit, a piece of paper. And what's going to happen is the piece of paper, when the vacuum cleaner is turned on, is going to be sucked into place by the vacuum of the air being drawn through, leaving all the air coming in from here. They're going to introduce the pig. Now you'll notice when I put the pig into the pipe, I'm not going to hold it there, because if I do that, it increases the vacuum inside the pipe, and the paper gets sucked inside. So you've got to be really quick. You put that on the end and put that in fairly quickly. So let's have a quick go. We'll put the vacuum on now, so it's going to get a little bit noisy. Okay. 